Oh, you're an icon. You're a, wow. Your reputation oh, is you. beyond. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. Um, we're live uh, with Scott Norton here. Um, we'll jump right in. Scott, I want to do short introductions from myself and Gabby, just, just so you know kind of who we are. Um, and then we'll start, um, I guess, discussing you. So um, my name is Herman Stevens. I'm a national level arm wrestler. Um, I compete annually at the world level. Um, kind of grew up on a farm. Dad's a cowboy. Um, played football, lifted weights, um, and I'm a degreed engineer. Um, and, and now I'm an, I'm an arm wrestler. So that's me in a nutshell. All right, Herman, good to meet you, sir. Hey, Scott. I'm just a low, middle-level level pro. Been pulling since 2005. Uh, multi-time national champ, made a little bit of money and pissed off Travis Badgen and John Brzezink many times over. That's who I am. Well, that's awesome, brother. All right, so... Good to meet you both. Thank you, sir. So, Scott, I mean, let's let's start at the beginning. I mean, you know, where are you from? You know, where'd you grow up? Did you play sports? Let's, let's do some of the basic stuff. All right, I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Love football as a football player, going through high school. Got in the weightlifter, have a weightlifter, but you know my true love was arm wrestling. I started arm wrestling pretty young, about seventh grade. Not competing, but you know just with your friends and everything. And uh, it just as soon as I got out of high school, I had a couple of tournament, I ran at a tournament, and uh, next thing, boom, 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 three tournaments. I'm in the world tournament down in Vegas. So, and uh, you know just. I got the fever, brother. I love it. I loved it. It was just the greatest sport. And I still, I miss it today. Nice. So um, in high school, did you power lift? I mean, you play football? I kind of Were you always as ball. big as you are now? I just, I, I really wanted to be, you know, take it to the next level. But I had a, had a couple bumps in the road. It didn't really work out for me. And after graduating, the first summer after graduating high school, I entered a tournament at a, a bar called Moby Dicks, and uh, you know it was a pretty, there was a lot of a lot of big fellas there, and uh, you know I just turned eighteen, and I just you know I just blew them all away. It was crazy, <laughs> and the next day, I'm, you know I worked for my father as we did concrete work, Norton and Sons Concrete. He had a crew of guys, you know. And the sports section, they had us on, you know, the not the front cover, but the, the, the bottom part of the, the cover. And there was my picture. I said, what the heck, you know. So anyways, I went right from there to, to the state tournament, won the state tournament, went to the five-state championship, won that. And then, I, I mean, I just got the bug. Yeah. I went to Las Vegas, entered the world tournament, and went on two. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a little bit of context. How big were you at 18 years old, Scott? I was 306 pounds. Oh man! Yeah, I was. Uh, I was a big kid, you know, and I mean, I could move. I was. I was quick. I was a good athlete. I played nose guard uh, in high school ball, and uh, I had I, I had a real serious hip injury playing high school football, and dislocated my hip, and it turned out that I had a, a birth defect in my right hip socket. It's not as big as it's supposed to be. So I, I would dislocate my hip. I dislocated my hip playing ball one time and I've dislocated it twice in the ring. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's it was a, a hindrance. Sounds, yeah. Yeah. Sounds painful. Yeah. That's kind of uh, interesting. Someone your size and strength, uh, 300 pounds playing nose tackle. Um, I was a 185 pound offensive guard. Yeah. So I think I might have had my hands full. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. It's in the book. But we were playing at Parade Stadium, and we played all this, the Minneapolis schools would, would uh, get to play at Parade Stadium on Friday night. And if you got the night game, it was a big deal. So we were also, you know, we're getting ready to play West High, and I played for a school called Patrick Henry. Anyways, this center come, you know, they they broke the huddle and he come out and I looked at him. And I says, he's just a little guy. I says, I am going to eat this guy alive. And it was kind of raining that night a little bit, and I slanted to the to the right to take the guard out, 
And that little son of a gun came out that line of scrimmage and just pounded me. <laughs> <laughs> and he popped my hip. And the craziest thing about it, he ended up being a, uh, a highway patrolman years later, and he pulled me over. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it turned out to be that was a pretty good story. Nice. <clears throat> so, um, I guess at this uh, these earlier tournaments, you're 18 years old, 19 years old, and you're pulling super heavyweights. Um, you said you went to the state championships and you you were able to win that event. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and pretty much that's where I got my nickname because I mean, nobody stopped me in all these tournaments in the. And the up in the Midwest tournament, the five state championship, I mean, it was like the second biggest tournament I've ever been in as far as te- not the quality of talent, but the entries. There was, you know, I mean, I 15, 18 matches and uh, wow, win the tournament. I mean, it was just crazy. <laughs> and I mean, there, there was, I think that if I'm not mistaken, it was like 43 or 44 heavyweights or super heavies. And it was just a two-day tournament. It was just awesome. So it was a great set. And, you know, Minneapolis, you know, I mean, I had a reputation there. And people got with me, you know what I mean? Uh, and I wanted to take it. I wanted to see where I could bring it, you know, because, I mean, I was just, you know, dominating guys. I mean, and then I learned. I mean, at the level that, you know, I want, I, you know, I took it to, it's no joke. You know, yeah, you get, you get humbled quick. Hey, what year is this, Scott? Like, what what time frame are we talking? Seventy six. Oh, okay. okay. Seventy six, seventy seven, right there. Yeah, right. You know, so it's a long time ago. <laughs> so at that point, were you locking horns with Cleve Dean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, uh, I ran to Cleve Dean about nineteen eighty in Detroit, and I couldn't believe it. I said, what <laughs> the "Hell." Is- I mean, you know, I was always pretty much the biggest guy in the tournaments, and and uh, that's where it started with, between he and I. And uh, it was a big tournament. You know, it was a good tournament. It was a, uh, it was a national tournament. There's a lot of entries and everything. And I got I, – I, I don't know how it happened, but second round I had Cleve Dean, and uh, he popped me right away. Boom. And uh, he kind of laughed at me. <laughs> I really did, you know, and it just pissed me off. I just, <laughs> and I was with, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the pro wrestling world, but me and Road Warrior Hawk were friends in high school, and he went everywhere I went. He was, we were just best friends, and and he saw Cleve, you know, do that, and I mean, and I was hot, I was pissed, and I, you know, I just told him, I said, I got, I'm going to get this something, you know, and. I came through the back door. I had to win about six, eight, nine matches. And we did it again, and he did it. You know, he just crushed me. <laughs> he was so dominant. Yeah. And it just, but I mean, it just put a fire under my ass. I was just, and I just, I told Hawk, I said, I don't care what I got to do. I'm going to beat this son of a gun. And hey, so- Scott, so some questions about that day. Um, was uh, Cleve taking your hand? Was he opening your hand up, or was he beating you in the hook? He didn't even have to. He just he just pressed me out. I mean, it, yeah. was, it was just so dominant. And this, you know, I mean, it was. I mean, I wrestled a lot of five hundred pounders at, by that time, that were easy, easy, but Cleve was different. Cleve was Cleve was athletic. Cleve, I mean. He was a, a monster. His hand was enormous. <laughs> His wrist, I mean, it, he just, and it was another animal, you know, and I mean, uh, he took it to a level. He made you pull your game up, you know, to a place. And uh, one Bedford Cleve, I'd, you know, in 86, I mean, I did every, I, when I sat down and really went to work on, the over the top tournament to train to be Cleve. It was insane. I mean, what I did to myself in the in the gym for two years and on the table was, it was it was worth it. But I mean, we went to work, and that's what you had to do to beat this guy. And uh, <laughs> hey, he, Scott, let me let me slow you down for a second. So, um, let me just understand something. Road Warrior Hawk 
was an arm wrestler also? No, he was my best friend. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, okay. We, yeah, we hung. I mean, he was a, my biggest fan. He was just a great friend of mine for a lot of years. You know, I mean, Hawk passed away now, which is, just kills me. But, uh, yeah, we're just buddies. We went everywhere, you know, and he was uh, – he was into it. He he loved watching me arm wrestle. We, you know, I was his best buddy. He was my best buddy. We were just we're pals. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, before eight, uh, 1986, so in 1980, you pulled Cleve Dean. He beat you a couple times. What happened after that? Did you face him in 81 or 82? Yeah, I faced were you him. Doing three, other world level tournaments. Three more times. Yeah, I I was I was active, pretty active from 80 to 84. And I, I arm wrestled three more times in Vegas. And, uh, no, okay, three times in Vegas and once in Minnesota. And uh, the next time I arm wrestled, it took about a minute. I mean, I stopped him dead in the table, and then he got my hand, and I couldn't get him back. And But, I mean, we went for a good long time. And then it just started getting more competitive and more competitive. And then in Minneapolis, we had a – just a monster pull and it was pretty you know but yeah Cleve was he was my you know where he went I went because I yeah. to beat the guy you know was anyone else beating you at that time period between 1980 and 1984 oh, yeah I mean I took some losses I mean uh I got beat by well the first world tournament I was in Bob Olson got me twice okay and that's when I had learned about a little back pressure. Because when, you know, what I was doing up in the, the Midwest, they weren't, you know, I was just straight lock up, ready, go, bang. And, you know, I, I learned from from a, that. Eddie Arnold was tough for me. He beat me a couple times. Virgil Arcero got me. Uh, you know, some top of the line guys. Johnny Walker got me. In Minneapolis, but that's after I had a monster pull with Cleve. I'm not saying taking anything away from Johnny, nothing. But I mean, I think I'd have had a lot. I mean, I was. So you, so you I think I'm getting ahead of myself here as far as you doing this interview? But I'm sorry, but you know, those guys. I mean, it, at that level, you're not going to win all every every time. No, no. Yeah. So, so Scott, you took some losses from '80 80 to '84, but I mean, these guys are all like all time greats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I you mean, know, like everyone you listed is like all time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and you know, it, it, it was, it's hard. You know, I mean, I'm, the, I'm not a, I'm a good, good guy, but I mean, I take it really bad. I don't like getting beat. You know, I got beat by a guy that I, I'm not even sure who it was, in South Dakota one time, and it's just because I, it wasn't just because I, but I mean. I just underestimated him, and uh, he caught me, you know. And, I mean, I just – and I guess it turned out to be Richard Lucas, which there you go. might have oh, made wow. sense. Yeah. Might have made sense, you know, because uh, I, I never got to pull Richard because after that, those times, you know, he just stayed down in the light heavyweight thing, you know. And I'm, and I'm not even sure if it was Richard. But I got a I got something on Facebook from a guy, and uh, it showed a picture of me being all psyched up and awesome. But I, he said this is this is one of the one match that Scott lost to Richard, a guy that I would have loved to pull with him, and you know had these wars with him. It just never came about. And uh, but you know everybody I got beat by that I you know I never, you know they're all world title holders or. You know, Hall of Fame guys. Yeah. You know, and uh, they're just, you know, it's a tough sport. <laughs> a couple of years ago, uh, John Brzezink was asked, who was the strongest arm he, he believed in the history of, the, of, of arm wrestling? Was it Vavoda? Was it Travis? Was it, was it Devin? And he always said, it was you. So did, did he know that firsthand? Did you guys ever actually pull or yeah. he's just going theoretically? Okay. Johnny, to me, is one of the most, not even, he's one of the most phenomenal athletes, period. To do what he's done for as long as he's done it, mm. it it's amazing. And to, to work at the level he worked at, and I mean, Johnny goes and gets everybody. He don't back down from nothing. But 
when I was okay, I beat Johnny in '84. That I beat him twice in '85, and that's after '85. I I just says I'm going to concentrate on this tournament over the top. I got a year, eight nine months, and I'm going to war. <laughs> yeah, but I mean Johnny never got close. I mean it was yeah. really you know I was I mean I come out of that you know the, the gate like a damn drakester man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you know Johnny just. He just, I was, over, I overpowered him by a, a, a long shot. And I'm yeah. not disrespecting Johnny a bit because, you know, we'll get to the later stages of what happened with my arm wrestling career and everything. But, you know, he just, you know, I could understand why he would say that. Be, yeah. I'm not trying to say anything, but I mean, I could understand that. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, I'll, I'll, I'll spice it up a bit. If anyone doubts, uh, how big or strong Scott Norton is. He refers to John Brzezink as Johnny. I hope I'm not disrespecting him, but no way. You know, we polled a zillion times. Yeah. yeah. You know, we went to <clears throat> Japan on the same thing with Over the Top. And I, I hate, I don't want to ever disrespect him, but I mean, I was toying with Johnny. Uh, I mean, yeah. it. I mean, there was nothing that I couldn't do, and to see where he went, and this is something that I really want to keep discussing. And he's amazing. He, you know, and he, he's just an absolute, you know, star. In the, you know, he's the best. Mm -hmm. He's definitely the goat. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I don't want to never, you know, because I mean. I left after 10 years. Yeah. He stayed for another 30. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if he's watching now, he's smiling. Don't worry about it. No disrespect, I, oh, absolutely. Know, Johnny's, yeah. that, that, you know, that's what some bought him, too. I mean, you yeah. know, he's a pretty mild matter guy. And I, good God, I mean, some of the greatest matches I've ever seen, he was doing it. I mean, he was part of them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm proud as hell to have competed against him. And I, you know, he's a great ambassador for our sport and uh, got a lot of respect for Johnny Brzezink, man. Believe that. Yeah. There's no question about it. So, Scott, you mentioned, um, I think, losing to Cleve around 84. And then you said you were going to focus for a year or two on the uh, over the top tournament. Yeah, I see what happened is I pulled Cleve in Minneapolis and we went damn near three minutes. And he, it took him about a minute to get my hand over. I mean, and then he got, you know, but he just, I mean, I, he couldn't move me. And I mean, and I just knew that something had to, I had to get stronger, correct something, go to work. So I wrestled one more tournament the next year in Reno. That's where I wrestled Johnny again. And I mean, then I learned about over the top. And I said, that's it. This is the supposed to be the biggest term at all. This is a legendary deal. I'm going to beat Cleve Dean there, and I'm going to work. And I mean, <laughs> when I mean go to work, you know, I I didn't work. I, I worked. <laughs> yeah, I went to the gym <clears throat> daily. I, I put my life on hold to just concentrate on winning that tournament. And that's what it took for me to be Cleve. You know, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. It was, a, you know, and the, it, it, to have a, a goal like that and a focus like that for that long and be able to just concentrate. I mean, heck, it was, it was eight months before it was a year away. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I was dialed in. I was in, you know, and, and you know, the, the place where I was training at and the guys I was training with were just unbelievable. It was, yeah. it was a great experience for me. And so were you and Cleve the last final match? Was that the final match of the event? Yeah, well, I wrestled him in the fourth round. And then uh, he came through the back door just sort of like what happened in Detroit. Yeah. He came through the back door and I got him in the final. But what I mean, I got him. I got him like he got me. Yeah. I, mean, I just pressed him out. Boom. And 
that that when I I mean, you know, I, I I don't know how you talk about yourself without trying to you know. I don't want to be cocky. I'm not Travis. <laughs> I love Travis. I think Travis, Travis Bajan's great for the sport. He's I heard he's a great guy. Just got a big mouth on the table. But anyways, you know, I that tournament. I mean, I easily won that tournament that day. I was. It just it was easy. So how many people were in your class that day? Pardon me? How many people were in your class? Oh, uh, it was in the 20s, maybe okay. 30. Yeah. And you went undefeated? Oh, yeah. I, I, nobody lasted a second. I mean, I just, boom. It I mean, were like people surprised doing or what? Pardon me? Were people surprised? No. they, they People knew because they see Johnny – Nobody's beaten Johnny besides me and Johnny Walker. And then Johnny got Johnny Walker, I guess. And then I disappeared. But Johnny never, I don't think Johnny ever wrestled Cleve Dean until after Over the Top. So anyways, when I came back, Marvin Cohn was, uh, you know, he, 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 he knew that I had, you know, I was training. I was in contact with all the time. I told him some of the things I was doing in the gym, the weights I was, you know, I'm bench pressing damn near 700 pounds and shoulder pressing 495 for reps. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was just, and then, you know, the wrist and forearm work I was doing was just insane. And he just kept, you know, he was like, God, Scott, you know, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. And I said, I know I'm doing it. I said, this is, they ain't, nobody's got a clue what's coming at them. I mean, I'm coming out of the gates. So anyways, then Marvin, for the movie, had a group of the arm wrestlers go to Japan. To, you know, to build up, you know, they had a term and everything. And uh, that's where me, Cle or me and Virgil Arcero and me and Johnny did some pulling. And I mean a lot of pulling. And, uh, oops, my thumb, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and he, you know, he knew, he, I mean, he, he was telling me, he says, there's nobody going to stop you. Nobody. And I, you know, and I, in my mind, I mean, still was Cleve, you know what I mean? It's a whole other world when you get in there, you're pulling 300 pound guys and all of a sudden you grab this 500, 600 pound man and his thumb the size of a, Freaking turkey leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but, you know, it just, it, it wasn't a surprise in the room because I felt like it was always clean. Everybody says, you know, I'm, you know, they're kind of arm wrestling for second. Well, I had a mentality that I wanted to beat them and I wanted to beat them bad, you know. And I could just tell the way everybody was after the first couple matches. And I mean, I was just, it was as fast as you could move your hand. And they were just, and people started getting this buzz, you know, and they started, you know, the people that didn't know about myself. And then it just started. <clears throat> then all of a sudden, me and Cleveland, the fourth round, we had a little problem hooking up. And I mean, if you ever seen the tape, I, just, I, I, very rarely did I ever have to fight a guy for a grip. I would go in, put my elbow down. And I grab his hand. I mean, I I just didn't care. <coughs> I mean, I cared, but he was always so upset about the grip. <laughs> and I don't. I don't. Have you either? Of you seen the match? No, sir. Okay, no. I, I should have sent it to you, baby. But I mean, I just go and put my hand out. He sets his hand out there. I grab it. Then he starts moving around. And I'm just sitting there, you know. Finally, I just you know I got pissed at him. You know, I mean, come on, let's get. You know, I mean, it's been a long time coming. But he knew. I just tell the way he looked at me, he knew <clears> I was going to beat him. I just felt it. And when I looked at him, I just said, this is, I mean, I'm going to pound this guy. But I didn't know it would be like that. And, you know, and I got a lot of respect for Cleve also. I mean, uh, he was, my eyes, he's the best super heavyweight ever, of course. I mean, God, the guy won for years too. You know, but uh, that was my time right there. So, Scott, that's what makes this uh, interview, I guess, so exciting is that <clears throat> we've always heard bits and pieces of the Scott Norton arm wrestling story. And um, 
I still, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly young. I'm about 29 years old, so I definitely wasn't around back then. They weren't. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, but I, I do a lot of digging. I've watched a ton of video. And, I mean, my understanding was that, you know, Scott Norton was a big bench presser. He shows up one day, kills everybody, disappears. You know, so I had no clue that you were an arm wrestler for 10-plus years, 15 oh, yeah. years, something yeah. like that. I mean, I, I took my lumps. <clears throat> it didn't just – I just didn't show up. I mean – I, you know, I, I had, you know, I won some national tournaments and, some, you know, a couple of big tournaments in Canada and, you know, local stuff. And, you know, we did some travel. I went out west and I was out east quite a bit. But back then, if, if it was like it was is today, oh, my God, I, I'd, I'd have never left it. But it's, you know, it was because I loved arm wrestling. But arm wrestling actually led me to pro wrestling okay because when we were touring japan <clears throat> for over the top me johnny and virgil arceo and everything i was approached by new japan pro wrestling they knew that i knew hawk they knew i knew rick rude and you know minneapolis had a pretty good reputation with these guys and i mean you know we we're a bunch of young crazy guys and they knew about, you know, my strength and how big, you know, I was a big man. And uh, they offered me a contract. I went to, I was planning on staying with arm wrestling. But after that tournament, it was, it wasn't disappointing, but it was me and Johnny Brzezink were supposed to be on, on the cover of a magazine called Grip. It was Joe Weider's magazine. David against the Goliath, you know, the big, you know, he, he won the truckers division. I destroyed the, the super heavyweight thing. And we're to go from there, you know, and I'm going, God, this is, be, you know, it's, it might get a start big, big, you know, it didn't. That, it, that fell through. And it was disappointing. But now I'm 28 years old. It's time to start concentrating on making some real money. And having a career, they they offered me a deal, and I remember you know tracking Hawk down. You know he's always on the road, gone. And I asked about New Japan Pro Wrestling. I said, "Is that a good company?" He says, "Why?" I said, "Well, they offered me a deal." He said, "You don't take it, I'll kill you." Because he's been trying to get me. He was trying to get me to wrestle for years. All the you know, I mean, in in my book, you'll you'll see you know it's a it's. My wrestling, arm wrestling career, then my pro wrestling career. And uh, it was, it's really cool, you know. And uh, I went with the pro wrestling and uh, it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. So how, how big were you at the time of uh, over the top tournament and going into wrestling? I was, I weighed in at 338 that day. Jeez. And how tall are you? Six three, yeah. But uh, I was a I was a big six or two or th I was a big three thirty eight. Put it that way. Yeah, I was yeah. thick. You know, I was a big <clears throat> man, and uh, um, you know, I was athletic as hell. You mentioned uh, Rick Rude, and uh, one of the audience members asked a question: um, Was Rick Rude a legitimate arm wrestler? Absolutely. <laughs> Me and Rick Rude. Started arm wrestling each other in seventh grade in the, in the cafeterias at lunch. And we'd bet, you know, the ice cream sandwich or, <laughs> you know, a hamburger or whatever. And, you know, I, I was bigger than Rick. But if Rick, Rick was a badass. If Rick would have stuck with arm wrestling, I think he, he placed third or fourth in a world tournament. He got beat by Johnny Walker. But gave Johnny all he wanted. And that's wow. that's a bad, you know. Johnny's a bad boy, <clears throat> and uh, I mean, Rick was legit, but you know he he went right out of high school, pretty much into the pro wrestling. And we're, you know, I mean, Hall of Fame guy, unbelievable talent. He had a hell of a career. Yeah. Hey, um, have you? Do you follow arm wrestling these days? I mean, do you keep up with it? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, 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 you know, when it was on television a lot, I was, you know, I watched it. Keep up with it on Facebook and whatnot. You know, I, 
I follow Travis. For, I mean, you know, well, about five years ago, Travis, I was on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, he was running his mouth, you know, how he does. And some somebody made a comment, or some another, and uh, I made one back. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, they want me to come back and pull Travis. And, you know, I, I really wanted to, after my arm wrestling, our pro wrestling career, come back and do this, you know, because there's something I, I miss it and I love it and this is the best thing. So, I mean, I, I had some injuries in the wrestling business that were just really bad for a guy that went, you know, was an arm wrestling champion. I, I tore both biceps and I've torn both triceps. Jeez. Tore a pec. <clears throat> and my right wrist looks like, the doctor said it looked like powdered milk, you know, from chops and just so much force, you know, I mean, it's no, it's no joke in Japan. That part of the pro wrestling deal over there is for real. I mean, it's 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 very it's strong style. It's hard hitting. And it's it's hard. It's you know it's it's tough deal. What specifically was different? Was it more hardcore with the uh, weapons and that sort of thing, no, or weapons, just... no? But as far as it's just way more. It's okay. It's In the States, it's more of a, a show. Over there, it's more of a contest. I mean, when you... We're, we're, we're whacking them pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> and I, you know I, I, just the injuries I had, I knew that I could never come back to you know, do what I was doing. But then I got a little beef with Travis... I got the wrist wrench. I got the top roll deal. I got the country crush, and I went to work. Man. <laughs> oh, I did. I went to work, and, and I and my form and hand strength got, I, I think, better. But my shoulders were just killing me, and you know I'm trying to, you know, I used to do farmers walks with 200 pound dumbbells, and just go for a little stroll, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I could, it, that killed me. You know, I used to be able to just walk off with them. You know, I'm just going, God dang, you know. So anyways, I go to an orthopedic surgeon and uh, I need both shoulders replaced. It's from all the damage from my tricep and bicep tendons. Wow. That the shoulder had to overwork over the years. And so, I mean, I really want to try this again. I want to come back and do it. I, I don't think that being in when I was, you know, trying my comeback, I was in my 50s. And I, you know, I, it was encouraging because, I mean, my hand strength and forearm strength was off the charts. But I just couldn't get anything going on with my, my biceps and triceps. So, um, how old are you now, Scott? 60. 60. And where do you live generally? Houston, Texas. Okay, I saw that on the area code. Um, would you consider doing Masters Arm Wrestling or Grandmasters <laughs> or something like that? No, I'm I'm uh, going to get both shoulders replaced this year. Okay, so like arm wrestling is like out of the question, period. Unless them, dang, I mean, they come up with some kind of uh, superhuman. If, they, if, it, oh, if, it, if I can, yes, there's no doubt in my mind. Because if I get my hand back, what I... <clears throat> my hand and form like that again, which I can. I mean, I, I'd have never stopped training. I was having a time of my life. Yeah. I mean, doing just all the, you know, I was following Travis's. I mean, uh, Devin's, all his stuff. I was watching all his YouTube stuff and a little bit of Michael Todd. And I just, Oh, no, 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 not Michael Todd. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I don't know about what he's doing on the table, but I mean, I watched some of his workouts. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never okay. seen anything like that before, but that's a whole other animal right there. Dude's a badass, too. Don't give me no, – I mean, he deserves his credit. But, uh, yeah, I, I follow it. And, I, you know, I, I was 
really wanted to do this. Yeah. Well, you have to keep me posted on the, the surgeries. I mean, if you if you think you're, uh, the surgery is good enough and you're ready to go, I'm in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So I can always drop by. We can get you some uh, coaching on modern technique and stuff like that. You guys in this modern technique. Okay. Don't look at me. What, what Don't look at me. I'm a power guy. I'm what do you think guy. we're doing back in the day? I mean, okay, explain your modern technique. Um, these days, and I'm open to discussion. These days, it seems like there's a lot more, um, I guess, technical aspects, right? So I've seen hooking in the past, and I think now when you hook, there's a lot more components being used and a lot more counter strategies being used. And I think that also applies to top rolling. Um, <clears throat> in the past, you might see someone pressing using mostly tricep, no hand, no real supination. Whereas I think now you might see someone pressing with wrist control, back pressure, pronation, um, et cetera. Um, it just, just watching the video, it seems like yeah. the elite athletes are doing more things um, on the table. And wow. I mean, it's subtle, but. Well, also the tables add into that because in Scott's era, the tables were, you had the cup and it was in line, right? So basically it promoted power arm wrestling, hook in there and I agree. Power, power versus power. Now you have the offset, you have larger pads, they're square. And so you have more tactics and leverage and, and dragging and all this stuff. So oh, I, under yeah. I understand. I understand. But I'm, I'm taking talent from different eras. And you put them, you, can, you take the talent from today and you put it back when I was doing it, they're going to be talented. You take yeah. the talent from when I was doing it up to now, they're going to be good. Yeah. It's just, it's, and, and I understand, you know, the, I, I actually like that table like that. The, you know, I, you know, we were straight across from each other and it was a power deal. You know, yeah. shotgun got start, bang. But, you know, I, you know, I see, you know, when a guy's got to do six matches with one guy straight on and they, they're making adjustments, that's awesome. Yeah, it's good for the you sport. Watch, when you watch Johnny arm wrestle, he's a great arm wrestler. He, that's what another thing. I mean, he's not only is he a – I mean, whatever went on inside that damn arm of his, but, I mean, he's, he's a awesome. You know, he does everything at the right time. But, you know, I, I still think that we'd have figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I have no doubt that the yeah. elite guys would figure it out. My only comment was that it's a little bit different. Now, I will say oh, this. absolutely. And because, because the pads are staggered, someone like you would actually be able to get his press easier or get his hook a lot easier um, because usually we start slanted or even carved in a bit, you know? Yeah. See, the thing what I would have difficulty with is the way they start, though. You know, the way that they, they're not ready, one, two, go, or ready, go. And it's just different. And, and you know, but that's still everybody's doing the same thing. As long as everybody's going for the same rules, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, don't, I wonder, what, what do you think a, a man of Cleve Dean size with a start like that? I think it would made him better. Yeah. Well, he'd be able to get his shoulder in, right? There's more shoulder support with the offset. Absolutely. So he, I, I agree. And he was such a tall man over his arm that that offset would have definitely come in his favor. Yeah, that, uh, that could have hurt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, I'll tell you. One year, me, Virgil, George Hood, I think uh, Bob Olson was there, Clay Rosencrantz, and Cleve Dean's bending our, I mean, he, I'm surprised he didn't break one of our arms. I mean, he was just, just snapping things. I mean, it was mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, that offset, he would have been, Something else. A guy like Virgil Arce would have been. I mean, Virgil was a unbelievable. See, that's what blew me away about Johnny. I see Johnny Brzezink. He goes and locks up with Virgil, and I'm, you know, I got more respect for as much respect for Virgil as anybody. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, he he hooked him and he beat him in a hook, <laughs> and nobody beat Virgil in a hook. <laughs> You know, I mean, he was, Virgil would stop Eddie Arno, who was, a, a, you know, Eddie came inside like a, ton, I mean, Eddie was a really talented arm wrestler. 
and Virgil would hook him and catch him and just took a little, you know, just kept adjusting through it and just impressive. But then all of a sudden, Johnny beat Virg, and I just went. It's the first time I've seen Virg get beat besides Cleve. Yeah. You know, so it was, it was a big shock. And then, so when I finally wrestled Johnny, I'm going, good God, I got, I'm going to have to hit this boy hard, you know. I mean, it, and it worked out, you know. But, I mean, so actually I was beating Johnny, Virgil's beating me, and Johnny was beating Virgil. How the heck, you know what I'm saying? There's, weird. there's a general contention that a modern athlete compared to a, a previous generation athlete would, would have more advantages due to evolution in science and nutrition and stuff like that. And, I agree uh, with that. But well, that's what's so interesting with John Brzezink is John's career past 40, you know, almost four decades or that he was able to compare Vavoda in 2004 with Devin in 2008 and you back in the, in, in the mid 80s. And he was the only one who can really make a statement like he made only because he he pulled you know all through those eras and for sure. and for him to say and he said this maybe five six years ago that scott norton back in the mid 80s had the strongest he didn't say the best but he's just the strongest arm wrestler to ever live and he can back it up because he pulled all of the he pulled vavoda at his strongest he pulled devon at his strongest and that's what i find so amazing with his his um his point yeah. that he, he can back it up because he pulled yeah. all of them you know and 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 you're right about all the, the new age training these gimmicks all the stuff that work on the table yeah there's no question i mean that's what bloom that's why i was just like this is gonna be uh, if we'd have had this stuff back in the day you know i mean we were doing i was doing wrist curls that i puked with 150 pound yeah. dumbbell you know what i'm saying yeah. like, but today but, it's, you know it's just it's different but i mean we we're strong as hell you know it was yeah. but you know this I mean, for a wrist a wrist wrench to wear you out the way it does, and I mean, you just keep doing. You know, I watched De uh, Devin. You know, and he's doing a fifty reps here, seventy five hundred reps here. So I started doing all this, and I just was, man, this is awesome. Yeah. But then it just I couldn't I couldn't get the important part of it. Well, Scott, I mean, the the crazy thing is, like, regardless of the tools, it's like, what it, what would happen if you had never quit? You know, I mean, it seems a lot of arm wrestlers don't peak out until 35 or 40 or something like that. And I think you you left around 28? 30, 29. 30. Oh, 28, yeah, 28 for crying <laughs> off. Well, you know, I was, I was strong, man. I mean, yeah. it was just – and I got stronger in the gym. I got stronger in my first couple of years of wrestling and uh, – it had been something, you know, I mean, I definitely, now, the reason that I really wanted to come back and arm wrestling is because I felt like I owed Johnny. Because I always got asked, you know, I mean, about Johnny Brzezink, you know, and you ever arm wrestle? I says, yeah, I did. And he says, well, how'd you do? I says, I was three and over against Johnny. But I was a little older than he was and a lot bigger. But he seemed to have no problem getting with anybody, you know, I mean, he, he just an amazing arm wrestler. And I wanted to come back to compete against him so bad. Just, you know, Johnny's in his 50s. I'd be, I was in, be in my 50s. It was just something that was, and it's a shame that I couldn't get there. And then when I started training anyways, we were texting back and forth. And I, you know, I was telling him, I was thinking about making a comeback and, Everything he was telling me, well, I'm done. My shoulder's gone, and I just went, "Oh God!" And then you know, I end up blowing my shoulders out, and everything happens for a reason, I guess. But I really wanted to come back and pull Johnny. Mm -hmm. So it made me think when he said you were the strongest he's ever pulled. Um, in your opinion, was it more of just a raw genetic strength that you had, or was it more of like your hyper focus, like you said you trained? super focused for like almost two years. Was it the mental or more physical aspect that made you great or made you that strong? Uh, well, coming out, I mean, as a kid, I was just strong. I mean, I was a strong young kid, big kid. My dad had me out doing concrete work, sw swinging a sledgehammer and mm -hmm. running around in mud when I was 12 years old. You know, I went to work with every chance I got. And I mean, uh, I was a, legit 300 pound guy i mean i graduated 306 pounds 
And uh, when I really focus with the, with when I mean a routine and got with it where I just absolutely concentrate on being an arm wrestler, didn't worry about the bench press. press that strength was already there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But uh, I did. I, I worked my back way more. I worked way a hundred, so much more pull ups and grips. And you know, we used to do hook things where we'd be in a cup and we'd, be, you know, and it just, I just concentrate on being the best armor so I could be. And you know, I mean, as far as you know, the ready one, two, go, I was gone. Boom. But I, I mean, I was so strong that nobody, you know, could tame me at that time. I'm sure guys could, you know, catch you in a hook and, you know, you get out of position a lot. Sometimes I would go too quick. And if I got caught, Virgil did that to me one time and he caught me at the pad. And he, you know, came, you know, I mean, and I was strong at that time too. And I mean, he, he pushed through me, you know. And it happens. But when I left, I mean, I never want to say anything, you know, about anybody, but there was nobody close. No. Nobody. And You're I, yeah. it's just, it was just, and it was, you know, I wish I could have stayed with it, you know. And I mean, I know Lucas got really strong, really big, and really good. Johnny got phenomenal strong. I mean, and, you know, uh, Gary Goodrich came along, but I don't think Gary could have stayed with my hand. I, well, I think my hand would have just, you know, overpowered him. But, uh, you know, there's some good, it would, you know, I wish I could have hung, but I had to go, man. <laughs> no, no doubt you made the right decision. There was a lot more money and prestige in, in pro wrestling. Well, it's not it's prestige. It, you know, it was a it was a career situation. Yeah. I, I love pro wrestling, but I really loved arm wrestling. Okay. I mean, that's yeah. something that, I, you know, we're, that was important to me too, you know. Hey, Scott, um, were there any wrestlers that you arm wrestled? Did anyone want to arm wrestle you? I mean, and who was the strongest if they did? Uh, I, I. I never wrestled Bubba, Bubba Ray. Uh, nobody arm wrestled with me. Nobody wanted a piece of that. I mean, <laughs> I think, I mean uh, Paul White later on, <clears throat> giant, big show. Oh, yeah. I punched with him a little bit. He'd have been legit. He's a big, strong kid. Huge hand. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But uh, doable. Definitely yeah. doable. He did have a, you know, I mean, he, he was big, but his his mass wasn't like Cleve was. No, no. His arms and form and everything. Uh, no. I remember one night in Japan, I was sitting, you know, you got the tables that are on the floor, you're sitting down, and a, and a Japanese guy wanted to arm wrestle me. And he's a big kid, you know, and I said, you don't want to do this. <laughs> and uh, he says, oh, we, 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 we go, you know. He says, this is very important to me. And I said, yeah. So we're sitting at this table, and I arm wrestled him and beat him. And he was so happy because he got to take pictures and everything. And so he came back with a couple of his friends. So the next thing you know, I got, like, five guys locked up, and I'm arm wrestling all of them. And... Uh, you know, I could mess with them. I just stayed on top of their hands, and they let me win. But that's the only thing that ever got really advertised in my arm wrestling time, or in my professional wrestling career, as an arm, you know, being an arm wrestler. They never did, like, a gimmick me arm wrestle somebody because they didn't want to damage the sport. I wouldn't let them. Mm -hmm. I protected oh, really? them. Yeah. I wouldn't have a guy come out there and hit me on top of the head with a table or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you know, poke me in the eyes. I'm, I kept arm wrestling. So it shows me arm wrestling these five big guys, and they put it in the, 
the sports section of the Japanese newspaper was pretty awesome, you know. But otherwise, they stayed away from. But they just the the, the people there know. Hey, uh, we have another question. Um, what do you really think of Hulk Hogan? Hmm. <laughs> really? I mean, who who's asking the question first? <laughs> we have ra well, it's random audience members, people watching. Yeah, I know. Uh, he's a good guy. He's he, you know, he's an icon. He, you know, I wrestled with him for five years in uh, WCW NWO. He's, you know, it's amazing. I mean, the guy, very talented. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, we weren't super close friends. I didn't go that route, you know what I mean? As far as people that I got to be really close friends with or kind of, you know, I mean, he was such a big star that when I wasn't in the ring or around it, I wasn't. I was Scott. This dude's Hulk Hogan all day long, brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, I don't do that. You know, I just, I'm grateful for the, having the career I had, the people that follow me, the uh, success I had with my, my wrestling career. But, you know, I mean, some of these guys, they wake up and they kick their shoulder up out of bed. <laughs> And I don't do that. Yeah. So, you know, and that's all right. And, you know, that's why maybe, I mean, the dude's iconic as hell. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. And, I mean, he is talented. We were, we were in New Orleans. It was me, the big show, Hulk Hogan, and the Nasty Boys went out for some drinks. And uh, next thing you know, I see Hogan's on the stage playing the bass with this jazz group. <laughs> and I'm going, and I mean, it was he was killing it. And I'm just going, is there this guy? I mean, he's, you know, and he's a talented dude, and, you know, and he's a decent guy. I mean, you know, I wish uh, I always wanted, he never wanted to wrestle me. He, I think he thought I was going to kill him. And I, you know, I, I really wanted that match, but it just never, had, it never came about. <clears throat> Were you ever in the same room as Andre the Giant? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean he must have I, been a presence, big man. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a. It's in my book. Me and Andre had a little bit of a dispute. Andre, Andre, we didn't start off too good, but it finished. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, Andre, he was, you know, a hard guy to get to know. Yeah. And we we're talking how big Cleve Dean is. Andre the Giant must, um... yeah. But Andre was a taller, longer guy. Cleve was a bigger, bigger oh. man, thicker okay. man. Oh, okay. I mean, Cleve's forearm was freaking twenty-four inches. My God, I mean, <laughs> you know, he's just a big, solid guy. He just was bent a little bit. It was perfect for arm wrestling. I was kind of hooked. <laughs> Hey, uh, Scott, do you have any uh, good uh, wrestling back uh, uh, locker room or behind-the-scenes uh, stories? Um, I've seen some interviews about the Steiner brothers uh, taping people to ceilings and all this stuff like that. Uh, I'm sure you've, you've got some pretty good stories over the years. Oh, with the Steiner brothers? Are you kidding me? We had a trainer. I'm not going to say his name. We're on the road, and... Uh... We wrestled in, in uh, it was a small auditorium. It, you know, I was a 3,000, 4,000 seater. And I forgot, we carry side bags, right? You, know, you carry your plane tickets and all this stuff in. And I forgot it in, in the locker room. And uh, I said, what the hell? You know, I got to get back in this locker room. And uh, I got the guy to let me back in there, you know, because it was... It was, you know, we had to drive back probably 20 miles. So I go in the locker room, and I hear this mumbling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I go, what the hell is that? You know, I thought it was an animal or something. I go walking around the corner, 
Here's our trainer. And the guy takes took care of Rick all the time. Tape to underneath a bench. <laughs> <laughs> he's naked. <clears throat> and this is the worst thing about it. He's got about... Oh, uh, God, I don't know if I should say this. I mean... Oh, say it. You can do it. No problem here. Got about 20 <laughs> Sharpies tucked up his backside. Oh, man. <laughs> and... Uh, I said, what? and the guy, he cut the tape, and all of a sudden, oh, poor guy fell off there, and he was so embarrassed, you know, and I'm just going, oh, oh my God. I, the first thing I told him is, I'll never tell anybody about this. <laughs> I don't remember telling too many people about it either. <laughs> oh, hell. And he's, and he's a trainer for an NBA team right now. Good God, he might get pissed at me. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they were they're crazy. They did them two guys right there. They were they were on fire, man. They're nuts. Had a lot of great matches with them. Uh, I mean, I had a partner, uh, Ray Hernandez, Hercules Hernandez. Yep, remember Herc? Big guy, strong as hell. We were called Jurassic Powers. Then you got Steiner Brothers in Japan. We're on this really good run, and we wrestled at the Budokan, and we're the first all-American main event ever that sold out as a main event. I mean, they they usually got a Japanese star in there. They won't. They never trust four Americans, and, and we just tore the house down. We got match of the year, and I mean, it, it was. When I talk about physical, you, you watch a match like that, and you see the shots we hit each other with, and the you know the suplexes, and I mean, what the people are, you know, you, if you don't put it out to them, they just they won't even respond to you. You gotta, I mean, you gotta lay it in there. Yeah. And I mean, we had some matches that were just unbelievable with the road war, or well, with them too. But I mean, with the Steiner brothers, they're Everybody asks, okay, like they say, you know, Johnny said I had the strongest armor at one point in time. Well, if I, my favorite opponent is Scott Steiner. We, you know, he was fast enough, definitely big enough and strong enough. And he could enhance me to, I mean, we just absolutely killed it. So, yeah, Steiner boys, they're, they're for real. And they're a couple of bad, I mean. God, a lot of tough guys in the in the wrestling business. Good guys, though. It's a good sport. It's a good business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember watching the Steiner brothers growing up, and I remember you being in the NWO and that sort of thing. And um, and it seems like most of your or the your bigger successes were in Japan, right? Weren't you the heavyweight champion? I think at one point, or I was IWGP champion twice. And nice. that belt is, you know, the WWE World Championship belt's the biggest one. And then it's IWGP, and it's uh, it's an you know that company. They they really took care of me for a long time, and I took care of them. I mean, all these injuries that I sustained over the years, I never missed matches for them. I mean, I tore my tricep. I remember when when I tore it, and I the first thing I thought about is I'd never arm wrestle again. Just it was. I mean, it hurt so damn bad. It was unbelievable. But I was more worried about I, I, if I was ever, ever be able to pull again. Because, you know, I I really mean this. I was coming back. And, I mean, I wanted to come back. And the more I saw Johnny roll, I said, God, I can't, you know. But it just didn't happen because of, you know, the injuries. But, uh it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hard sport. It's a great sport, and it, it, I just, uh, you know, but I was an arm wrestler first. Yeah, and that, that's interesting to hear. Like I said, I, I wouldn't have expected, I guess, a lot of the stuff in the interview because, again, it seemed that, you know, you came in, beat some people, and left. Um, but it's, it's it's kind of refreshing, or, or I'm glad to hear that, like, you were a real arm wrestler. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just stop. <clears throat> You know, one stop shopping. You can't. There's nobody could do that. I don't care. 
Like you see Devin pulling that that big world strongman guy. He's toying with him. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just the way it is. You just don't walk into. That's one thing you don't do. It just doesn't happen. I thought I tried it. I, you know, I won Moby Dicks. I won Minnesota State Championship, five state champ. I thought I was going there and blow everybody off the table. I got spanked and they sent me home. I mean, it's the way it is. You know? it, might, it might be one of the most humbling sports out there. If you're coming in from another sport and you have a big ego, um, arm wrestling has a way to just kick you in the ass that way. Absolutely. It's, you know, everybody thinks they're a really good arm wrestler. This guy, he was a good arm wrestler as a kid. This guy's best one in this bar, whatever. You get humbled quick in this. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I've taken a couple guys lightly and uh, <clears throat> you learn not to do that. I mean, <laughs> you see it, man, you hit them as hard as you can get them. I mean, every time it was just full bore. You know, there's, you know, I mean, there are, if you know them, if you, you know, if you pull the guy four or five times and you know, I mean, he can't beat you, you, you know that, but I mean. Hey, Scott, you there? Are we losing? Maybe. Was, did, did you hear me? No, we missed that part. Oh, well, what happened is I got a phone call from my publishing company. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so, but anyways, where were we? Yeah, I got a question um, from uh, one of the viewers. What were your favorite exercises for arm wrestling? And what were your numbers? Like how much were you lifting? Out of, out of bicep day, standing dumbbell curl, I would rep 150-pound dumbbells. You know, Jesus Christ. Really good. I mean – where I'd get six, eight, I don't know if I ever got to 10 reps. And then standing straight bar curls, I could do, you know, 315 on a good day. I mean, without, without a cheat or a little bit of a cheat? Not that you gotta give it a little kick in the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still. No, I mean, I see that Russian kid, you know, leaning against the wall or leaning against something. But this is a straight bar, and it wasn't just one rep either. Was, I could rep it, you know. And I mean, I love grips, gripping, and you know, pull ups are king to me. And I don't, you know, but you know, I mean, after getting with this country crush handle, it's phenomenal. I love that damn thing for back, and and working your grip. And then, you know, the wrist wrench and the top roller. I'm going, God, this is taking, you know. And then, you know, even with a rag with a cable, you know, just sitting there pronate. So, I mean, you can get your, it's just, it, there's not really one favorite thing. But, you know, then like farmer's walks. My grip, I mean, was, see, I did that all the time because I was, I grew up wheeling concrete. Oh, man, you know, he, he pour concrete, a basement, a big drive, whatever. You know, we're working residential, so we got to bring the concrete. We can't run the truck up on there. So I wheeled 20 yards of concrete. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I was 13, 14-year-old kid. <laughs> loaned it. I mean, it was, it, was just, it was easy for me. And... uh So you get strong. You know, it's just like you said, you grew up on a farm. You worked. And, uh, you know, it's just the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I got a friend, his name is Greg, and, he, and, he, and he's uh, a lineman. He works up with his hands all the time. You know, the, all the big power lines, you know, the big power towers and everything. His freaking hand, it just, he's a normal guy, about six foot four, 240, <laughs> and all of a sudden his hand shows up. 
and it just from working all these years and just with I mean it's just enormous hand. Yeah. And I said, you ever arm wrestle? He says, no. I said, man, you might want to thought about that. <laughs> I mean, remember, like I don't know if you remember Clay Rosencrantz. Oh yeah. You saw his hand. You know, it was a, a his hand was a lot. It was a, his hand was on par with Cleve Dean's for the size he was. You know what I'm saying? Correct. He was enormous, and uh, he had a different name. Guess the publisher's calling for with more money, right? <laughs> that was one more phone call. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, sorry. No problem. But, uh, you know, uh, again, I was interrupted. We're talking about, oh, my favorite exercises. You know, like when I got to this routine with the new stuff, I, I mean, I was addicted to that stuff. I couldn't wait to go train my form and hand. And I just loved it. I mean, you know, so, you know, it's doing it, basically. It's just, you know, you got to be full circle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm, I used to go on the bench and, you know, on bench days, I was repping, you know, 550 for eights, you know, on a, My wife just called me up the second time. She was upset. That's why I hung up on her. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, we just, you know, it's just training. It's and it's getting your body as strong as you can. And now it's, it's so much to do with nutrition and health. It's even you know, I, today's arm wrestler is absolutely their beast. I, I am so proud of where this sport has come from and the way that they are taking care of it and treating it to me it's awesome mm -hmm. and that's why i just if it would i'm telling you i probably wouldn't have left if it was like that back in my day i loved it and yeah. i mean and, and i was good you know i mean we we're i i you know <clears throat> and it's something you know i'm going to be involved with this sport after i get my shoulders fixed I'm going to train like an arm wrestler. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I'm going to train like an arm wrestler I die. That was the most fun. I had more fun training like that than I did when I was benching, you know, 700 pounds almost. I mean, yeah. it was just, to me, it was just, and plus, you know, it's not just a one-time deal. You know, you're working the stamina end of the deal. I love that. And I mean, you know, I've been working my grip. It's, you know, I got pro wrestlers all, you know, the, between your thumb and your your first finger there, the, the, the gap of the web of your hand, well, you got nerve damage from your neck, from all the slamming around and everything. Yep. Happens, yeah. And then plus, I tore the tendon in my thumb, so I need to get that probably fixed, or I don't even know if it... It certainly didn't happen the way that they told me I wouldn't be able to pinch my fingers again anymore, and I'm still doing that. But anyways, it's just... I. I Today is a training is is awesome what they're doing. Hey Scott, you ever meet up with the arm wrestling team in Houston? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. There's a pretty big group up out uh, in the Conroe area. Oh, I'm close to Conroe. Well, not close, yep. but I I definitely know where it's at. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think we're to. supposed to be having a big practice maybe in a month or so, and uh, I'll probably be out there. I'd. I'll, I'll keep you in the loop. I mean, I'd love Please to do. meet you in person. And if anything, if, even if you don't want to pull, we can hang out a bit. I can't pull. I mean, it's yeah. not that I don't want to. I want to. I want to so bad. I mean, it's, it's you know, I seen that tape of that 70-year-old guy pulling. I says, man, that's beautiful. You see yeah. that match? Yeah. That on backwards. Just, I said, that dude, I love him. Yep, Lynn Brower. Did you know him back in the day? No, but I, I'd ask for his damn autograph. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. I, you know, and, and, you know, all the guys I know, and, you know, it's – I miss it. I mean, it was 
it's a camaraderie. It's a great sport. It was a lot of fun. You know, it's something that, you know, you can just go in your own place, man, and just get right there. And I mean, what I did at that point in time, I grew up a lot in the two years going after Cleve. Cleve got me mad. You know, that's why things happen for a reason, but I mean, I wanted, I wanted to break that dude's arm. I wanted to First, I wanted to fight him off. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, he really hit me. You know, I mean, you know, and, and just from what, the way I was brought up where we grew up, I mean, it's Minneapolis, a tough town. We're tough, you know, I mean, I, you know, I ran with a tough group. I, I always ran with an older group, you know, and I mean, it was just, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't used to that. And, you know, and I, and I understand, I mean, you know, cause I'm fired up. I'm trying to, and I'm coming out like, I'm going to rip this guy's arm off. Right. And I was like, Pope, but he went, probably look, he said, God, he was easy. <laughs> you know, I just went, wow. It was, you know, but I didn't like it. So, but I liked Cleve Dean. I, we never talked until years afterwards. Uh, Ron Bath invited me to a tournament he was hosting in uh, Atlanta. <laughs> if I'd come out and do some autographs, that's when I was in the NWO. And Cleve entered the tournament, and, and I haven't seen him since. Over the top, but he asked me, says, you pulling today, Scott? And I said, nope. Just here to sign. You know, I'm, wasn't training, I wasn't, I was uh, still pro wrestling. Yeah. And we talked for about an hour, and we had I had the greatest talk with him. It was unreal. It was great. And, uh, you know, I told him, I said, man, you had me going nuts. I was ready to try to, I said, try to kill you, Cleve. <laughs> he says, you ain't the only guy who tried to kill me. He says, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he got the best out of me. You know, if it wouldn't have been for Cleve, I'd have never got to the level I got. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, and, and that's. You know, if I could have sustained it for a long time, I don't know why I couldn't have. I was a, you know, when, when Johnny says I was the strongest arm, I don't think I get the credit for as, as you know, I, I I was a good arm muscle. I mean, I, I stayed in a good position. I stayed high on the table. I was, you had to, you had to, you know, you had to pull the tree boot out to get me. You know? I mean, it wasn't an easy day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I thought that I had a lot of natural talent as an arm wrestler early on in my life that carried me. And then when I went to work, work, man, I mean, it was, it was on. <laughs> I mean, it was something that I really, and you know, I mean, you know, you all get old, and, you know, <laughs> but you don't want to, you don't want to back down. You don't want to say, you know, you, you wish you could, you know what I mean? What I did in the ring with the career I had and the friendships and everything I ma made over the years, and it, it, met a, uh, it was a, um, um, it's an unbelievable career I had, two careers. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I got a book coming out. It's called Scott Norton Strong Style. And uh, it's a hell of a read. It's a it's a really good book, and it, it's got a lot of great arm wrestling stuff in it. And uh, you know, the pro wrestling business was just absolutely awesome. But you know, between the two, I was an arm wrestler first, then a pro wrestler for sure. Yeah. Hey Scott, when is that uh, book coming out? It's good. It's pre-orders are being are being taken right now, and it's going to debut in Vegas uh, May twenty fifth. Good stuff. Yeah, we'll have to put a link on uh, on our page that way. Get you some maybe some a little bit of advertising. Sure. Yeah, it's uh, www.scottflashnorton.com, and. Uh, it's going to surprise you some. I, I mean, uh, I was a lucky man. I had a lot of great opportunities. <clears throat> I started a business where you, you need to be a young guy in it, and I started late. And that's my opportunities I took advantage of and worked out for me really well. 
and uh, it's an unbelievable read. I I I pro wrestled like I arm wrestled. I mean, it was a hundred and ten wide open. <laughs> Nice. And, uh, you know, that's who we were. And, I mean, it's that kind of athlete when you get to be that, you know, I mean, we could do that every night, and it was just, it was it was awesome. But, you know, when we're doing what we did, you, you, you two fellas and myself, you know, it's you get to train, and the training is great, but there's nothing like the day. There's nothing like it going up, and it's just like the song, man to man, you know, where it takes it all. Sit there, I mean, it's it's on. It's a, it's a great test of strength. It's an yeah. unbelievable way to test it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, most guys are, you know, I never really had any problems with anybody. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it was a blast. And, I mean, I, it was short-lived for, you know, 10 years ain't long enough or isn't long enough. But just everything happens for a reason, and uh, believe me, believe me, if it was like it was today, I'd have never left. I'd have yeah. never left. I'd have been in that gym for from one term to the next, and I'd have been on that table from one term to the next. You know, you're going to sustain injuries and you're going to wear stuff out for sure, but, man, that's... Yeah, I'd have loved that. That'd have been it just, and it's not like it wasn't great back then either, because it was. But you know, you got you know, you got the exposure, internet, everything's going on. It's it's more worldwide. A lot of great Russians, Europeans. You know, there's a dude in Poland, or you know, there's some talent out there, brother. And I mean, mm-hmm. it's just it's something that I I have never left. I know I wouldn't have. Yeah. Hey Scott, I got a. Uh... Maybe a really random question here. I was reading your Wikipedia page, <clears throat> and it said that you did some work for Prince back in 1999. Yep. You got any cool stories? Not 99. There? It was back at the Purple Rain tour. Oh, really? Okay, so Wikipedia is wrong. Up. See, I got that position in Vegas. Prince's bodyguard, his name was Chick. Dude was enormous. Six foot six, big white beard, long hair, huge arms. I got him in the opening round of the world tournament. And and I hurt him. I hit him and I mean I just drilled him. And it, he he couldn't continue no more. It's double elimination tournament, but I mean I just crushed him. And then you know he come over and start talking to me. He says, You're from Minneapolis, huh? I says, Yeah. He's one, you know, I, I work up there. And I said, oh, yeah. And he says, he told me his prince's live-in bodyguard. And I said, wow. So anyways, uh, he offered me a job. He says, you want to be about, you want to make some good money. So after that tournament, when I got back into Minneapolis, I gave him, you know, he gave me a card. And I called him up. Got interviewed. They sent me to Colorado for a week to train me. And next thing you know, I'm. Running around town with Prince. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty crazy. And, uh, you know, the Purple Rain thing was huge, you know. But I'm not supposed to discuss this. I can't put it in my book. When you buy a house, you think you sign a lot of contracts. When you when you work for this cat, <laughs> I, more confidential, con. I mean, there was... And... Uh, it was unreal, but it, you know, I got fired over a, a miscommunication. Me and me and the guy were kidding around about something, and uh, they they thought they they took it serious and just made a little joke, and uh, they weren't kidding. <laughs> they, you know, I was asked if. Uh, but I, you had partners. I had a, my partner's name was Huck. He's a giant, big, strong guy. He goes, Scotty. He says, if somebody's gonna shoot Prince, he says, what would you do? I said, I grab that little son of a bitch and I hold him up. I said, I ain't getting shot for him. <laughs> he says, Me neither, brother. Me neither. And the next morning, when we got up, the 
We're at the hotel. There's about six, eight letters stuffed underneath my door. They were from the, the police department. Don't go within 500 yards of Prince. And I go, what the hell's going on here? And I got, you know, then they met it. And we were just making a comment, and, you know, because we are in the locker room. Brothers, my battery on my phone's going down, but made a comment in the locker room and, uh, or the changing area, and the road manager heard it, and we are gone. And, you know, that was all right, because I wasn't a good babysitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, but he was a phenomenal individual. Prince was an unbelievable person. I just wasn't in that kind of group, but he was yeah. a super cool guy, and uh, he was a very thoughtful person. And it's a shame what happened to him, but yeah, that was that happened. You know, I got a whole book, and I I'm afraid to put anything in there about it. I hope they don't hear this. <laughs> I don't yeah, think, I don't think there's too many arm wrestling fans in the Prince's group, but you never know. Mm -hmm. No, I think you're safe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate you can't discuss too much. Uh, we were curious if uh, Prince uh, left you guys a lot of scraps. <laughs> uh, they, were, they were everywhere, brother. <laughs> that was pretty wild. I mean, you know, but he was a good man. He, you know, we went to uh, a barbecue place one time in Philadelphia. And we go in, there's nobody in there. And I'm looking around. And I see this cook staff, it's enormous, and they and they're all just going a mile a minute, man. They're cooking, they're working, and that's just and I'm going, is they make it that much there's like eighteen people at a party. I said, they got that much you know. Well what he did at this restaurant, there was a four to seat restaurant. He bought four meals for each seat. And then he paid for all that and then he had them taken to a, a food show uh, for the, the homeless. Oh wow. And I said that is you know and you know and he didn't want nobody to know who, that he did it or anything you know and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever you know mm -hmm. and, he, and he did stuff like that but he didn't he didn't need to be recognized. So people like that really stick out to me and I really Respect that, you know. That's super cool. Now, if my battery goes dark, I want you guys to know that I really appreciate this. And uh, when you do come up to Houston, I, I, please give me a holler. Or Conroe. Yes, sir. Because, yeah, that's something, you know, I, I need to be more around this. I was talking with Devin the other day, and he's such a kind, good dude, man. Devin's a great guy. And, uh... I need to get back around it. You know, I need to be back involved. It's something that you get away from it and you get a career and you're, you're gone, you're on the road, you're, you're on the other side of the world for crying out loud. And time flies by quick. Yeah. You know, have a ball with this stuff, man. It's a great, it's a great time. Yeah. So I think this is a good time to sign off. Um, I don't, Gabby, you got any more questions? No, I'm good. All right. Um, yeah, Scott, so I'll definitely be in touch um, anytime I'm in the area. Um, I'm, I was glad to have you on. Chris is the same thing. Um, I mean, I'm, I'll probably go out on a limb and say this is probably one of the most intriguing uh, arm wrestling interviews that's probably that we probably ever had. I mean, yeah. we've had very little interaction as a community with Scott Norton since, I guess, 86. So this is going to fill in a lot of people on um, your career and, uh, and really, I guess, expand on um, a huge moment in the history of arm wrestling. So I really appreciate your time, Scott. Well, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> we're lucky to be able to do what we got to do. You know, you have to have the talent to be able to compete and be part of something like that. And like I said, you know, today it's just it's a great sport, man. It's great. It means so much to me to get back talking about it a little bit. You know, I don't share this a lot with anybody. People, you know, I feel like Arm Wilson kind of forgot about me. And that's, you know, and I understand, you know, I left. But I tell you what, my heart didn't. I mean, mm -hmm. it's still there. And I mean, I wish, uh, you know, 
circumstances were different. You know, the injuries I sustained over the years, and I could come back because I would. But I, you know, I have nothing but respect for these guys today. They're phenomenal, and it's a phenomenal sport. And the dudes that are on the top of this game, from the top to the bottom, all class acts, man. Yeah. And just enjoy it. Have a have a ball, cause you know it's going to come to an end someday. Hopefully, you got 30, 40 years left in you. But you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yes, Nothing. Nothing's guaranteed. No, not at all. Not there's no free lunch. <laughs> yeah. No, sir. All right. Thanks again, Scott. I'm gonna go ahead and log us out, man. Look, I really appreciate it. Have a great night. It was our Later. honor. Thanks a lot. Hey, right back at you, brother. <laughs>